All right, well, welcome everyone. I am JJ. Let's tackle an example problem. So we're taking a look. We're saying let's use the method of sections to determine the force of members BC, CF, CG, and GF. Four members this time. Um, let's go ahead and mark those off. So our first one was member BC. BC. Then we want CF, um, CG, and GF. Um, so we know if we're tackling a method of sections, we're going to slice through this eventually, cutting as many of our members as we can. That said, we have three equilibrium equations we can work with. Um, I can't cut through more than three unknown members. So there's no way that I can get all four of these in here in one go um, at this point. If I were doing this problem for the first time, I would either cut diagonally through CD, CF, and FG. That would get me CF, FG, or GF. FG in here. Two of my unknowns. That's a valid approach for us. Or we could go vertically through BC, CG, and FG. Um, either way, I'm going to find a couple of my unknowns and I'll have to figure out how to move forward. If I were doing this though, I'm going to slice just straight down. It's going to be easier for me because I can get three of my unknowns in one section figured out. So I'll slice down and then I get a choice. Do I want to circle around to the left? cut through my pin and my roller, or do I want to circle around to the right, I'd have to include that thousand newton force. On this one, I would say by far my better choice is to circle that to the right. If I go to the left with this, I have to pass through the pin and the roller. That means I have to draw a free body diagram and find those. If I circle to the right, like this, my pin and my roller are cut away from this. They don't end up coming into this free body diagram. They don't matter. I can skip my find my support reaction step for this problem. Um, so that's going to be by far a better approach for us. So let's come in here. We'll circle to the right on this and draw a free body diagram. So I need to include, or let's draw in my uncut members. So that would be members A, G, B, G, and um, A, A, B, B, G, A, G. Three pieces for us to come in and tackle in here. So let's get that drawn really quick. We have three pieces that I need to get. Um, in the bottom right corner, I have a thousand Newton force going straight down. One thousand Newtons. Um, I know two meters over from that, two meters, I get to point G where I um, have, I cut two members coming out from here. Member FG going straight to the right, straight to the left. I know my directions. Straight to the left. Um, I assume tension every time. So coming from point G here, that would be member F or the force in member FG. I also have going up and to the left, FCG. Up and to the left, FCG. The force in member CG. Um, and that's going to be an unknown angle in here. Let's come and label that. That is theta. I'll have to find theta. Uh, if I go up, I go up three meters on this. Three meters. I'm going to get to point B. We're coming away from B. I cut member BC. So I have to show that in tension. So acting to the left, the force in member BC. F, BC. I can also come in and say, I know FFG and FCG intercept here at G, but remember it's BC and CG, if I project out CG and BC, they'll eventually intercept up here at point C. So let's label that one as well, because that's going to be a great place for me to sum moments at. If I'm summing moments here, I need my distance horizontally from B over to C, from G over to C. That's going to be two meters. We have that. A two meter distance in there. Um, but I can come in and I can find all of these. One, two, three unknowns. I have three equilibrium equations. I can get all of those. So let's come and tackle that up here. The first thing I need, let's find theta. Theta, I would get, just using some trig, theta is the inverse tangent of, well, remember CG went opposite, vertically three, adjacent horizontally two. So the inverse tangent of opposite three over adjacent two. This is going to get me 56.31 newtons. 
degrees. Uh, from there, I can come in and start applying equilibrium equations. So what should I do first? I have FCG and FBC, two unknowns in the y direction. Not a great place to start if I can avoid making a system of equations. That's true also in the y or in the x. I have FBC, FCG, FFG, three unknowns. It's actually a really bad place for me to start. So is there anywhere I can some moments at? Um, if we come in, let's start by doing moments here at point C. If I do that, I get rid of FBC and FCG, eliminating two unknowns. I'd only have FFG left. So let's tackle that with positive, going counterclockwise. I'm summing up my moments about point C. This is going to get me um, my 1,000 newtons will cause a clockwise rotation. So be in here is negative. Negative force is 1,000 times my distance from C horizontally to that vertical force. 2 plus 2 is 4. And then I can come in and say, well, what else causes rotation here? It's just FFG going clockwise. We could say we have our vertical distance is 3 times FFG. So minus 3 F. FG is going to get us to zero. Um, I can solve for FFG for this. I'm going to get that the force in member FG is equal to negative 1,333 newtons. That's negative with my original assumption that I was in tension on this. Uh, if I get a negative in tension, it's really a positive in compression. So we report as a positive in compression. We're also going to change our arrow around. We assumed it went to the left here in tension. We now know, so we're showing this with a dashed arrow, that it should be going to the right. It should be in compression. Any future equation that uses FFG will show it going to the right. We'll use it like it goes to the right. Um, but let's come in and report our answer. This is really FFG is a positive 1333 newtons in compression. We drop that negative. When we do that, we have to change our T to a C. Always for trusses, reporting it as a positive, and then say T or C for everything. That's one of my unknowns. From here, what do I want to get next? Um, well, with FFG unknown, I still have two unknowns in the X and two unknowns in the Y. Let's come in and some moments then. Again, so I'm going to do moments down here at point G. With positive going counterclockwise, if I sum my moments up about point G, well now I'd eliminate FCG, FFG um, would be gone as well. I'll get FBC and my thousand newtons. So let's tackle that. This is equal to FBC will cause a counterclockwise rotation about G. I took that to be positive. So three, my distance, times my force, FBC, minus my thousand newtons because it causes a clockwise. Minus my force is 1,000 times my distance from G to the bottom right corner at A is 2 meters. 1,000 times 2 gets us to 0. Uh, if I solve that for FBC, I'm going to get that the force in member BC is equal to um, 667 newtons. I get a positive number out from this equation, which means... My free body diagram had the right assumption on it. We are in tension, so we'll stick that T on here. T for tension. And that's my second answer. Um, with those two done, I am at the point that I could sum forces and figure out um, what's going on here. Actually, I think I said two unknowns in the Y before. That was totally wrong. I could have started by summing forces in the Y. I only have FCG in the Y direction. Um, let's do that one. Summing forces in the Y, we would have FCG goes up, so FCG times the sine of theta, 56.31, minus 1,000, is going to get us to zero. Which solving for FCG, I'm going to get the force in member CG is 1,202 newtons. I get a positive there, so it's also in tension. Which is my third unknown then. I have one last piece that I was asked to find, member CF. I can't get that with this free body diagram. It's not on there. Um, so I need to make a new one. 
My choices are now, there's two things I really could look at doing. I still could cut through C, D, um, C, F, and F, G, and circle any direction I want to. That would work for us. Really, I'd have C, D as an unknown, C, F as an unknown. Um, F, G, even though it's known, would show up in there. I can work with that, though. Two unknowns. I have three equilibrium equations. I could certainly find it. Or I could come in and say, you know, the easy thing for me really would probably be to just come in here at joint C and say, hey, I have a CF as an unknown I want to find. CD would be unknown in here. I just found CG and BC. I would have two unknowns in there. I could actually just work with joint C and do particle equilibrium. Let's tackle that. We're kind of combining previous material. But that's okay. Let's do method of joints. One time at joint C. That would get me FCD, unknown intention, going to the left. We would have FCF, unknown, so we put it in his tension, going straight down. FCF. I would have member BC. I got that one before. It's 667, intention. So let's put that in, still intention. So acting away from our pin. FBC is 667 newtons um, in tension. And then our last one, I remember CG in here as well. I got just a second ago that it was 1,202 in tension. So going down and to the right here, still in tension, acting away from our pin. FCG is 1,202 newtons, and it's also in tension. And my angle here is the exact same as it was before, still theta. Um, I could try to figure out FCD and then get FCG, or I could just come in and say, let's just sum forces in the Y direction, and I'll get my, sorry, FCF. Just sum forces in the Y. That's all we're looking for. So summing forces in the Y. I have FCF acting down, negative FCF. And I have FCG coming down. So minus, because it points down, 1,202 times our sine of theta. Sine theta was 56.31. 56.31 equals 0. Which is for FCF. I'm going to get the FCF is negative 1,000 newtons. That was negative. We were in our original assumption, intention. That negative means one more time just to build good habits. Let's put in this dashed arrow showing that we're really squeezing into the pin and then report it as a positive in compression. FCF is 1,000 newtons in compression, which would be our very last answer. Um, again, we can only get three unknowns from our section free body diagram, but then we can go potentially and use method of joints, or we can make a new section. Both ways, we would have gotten to the same answer in there. Um, either is okay with me. Um, but hopefully this is a useful video for us as we progress through that. If it was, hit those like and subscribe buttons. Let's get you an A with JJ.